Hello and welcome. In our previous video, we were able to edit the, to create the logic for uh, creating blog posts, uh, deleting blog posts, and uh, editing blog posts. Uh, we were able to you know, work around the CRUD uh, kind of workflow uh, with regard to the blog model and the blog uh, posts. So in this uh, tutorial, we're going to see how we can uh, uh, probably fine tune the issues that we've been having. For example, as I had explained, you can see that I'm not logged in, but I can be able to edit to create a post. Um, I might also not be logged in, but I'm able to even de uh, kind of delete a post. So yeah, so this is not very. Uh, it's not okay because you cannot. It means that there's no kind of security or there's no uh, workflow in which a user can manage or a user can handle their own blog posts. So this is what you're going to look at in this uh, tutorial. And uh, among other things, whenever you create a new blog post, uh, you'll notice that we have the. yet you notice that we have this form which is not does not appear like uh, as so how it was looking in the how it was looking like in the admin okay so we need to add this into the admin and how do we do that so i mean we need to add the ck form the django ck form and that is the reason why we imported it so it is as simple as um, come here just be before the crispy loading the crispy form I'm working on uh, this create posts uh, or create blog posts template. We will add a form dot media. So this allows us to be able to load the CK form. Uh, let me refresh this first. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing. Okay, even for the update form, we are going to add the same form dot media. And uh, remember that we are adding it after these uh, CSRF tokens, so that can also be uh, we can be able to secure the uh, whatever we are doing here. So let me see what happens when I click on edit. I keep on forgetting this update. Yeah, you can see now we have this uh, CK form. And inside it, you can be able to customize that to edit your particular uh, posts. And then I don't know why. Let me see if the create works. Yeah, probably I have a typo or something. Yeah, it should be form. From. Yeah, so we can create our form using this, and actually, let's just try it. Call it sample post. Uh, can probably copy something from this jungle. I can probably customize. And do some highlights and edits. I can also add a strike through. And uh, I can also change the style. So this is what we have in our sample post that we have uh, just created. Uh, okay, I don't know why I think there's a problem with the post. 
uh, nevertheless, you can be able to create these posts and uh, you can also be able to edit an existing post. So now, uh, whenever you, you can see that we, we have not even, we have not logged in, but we can be able to probably edit a post and this is not okay. I keep on adding edit. So to avoid repetition, yeah, you can see we have not logged in. Uh, so to avoid repetition, I'm going to add a button in each of these posts or edit and create. So let me go to the blog article. And uh, oh, this is for the individual articles. So I'm going to look for the blog posts. And then I'm going to add we have this continue reading actually let me add it inside the post so let's go to the back button we have edit and uh, delete and this one i can set it as primary and the other one i can set yeah i can set it as Danger or warning. Uh, let's first see. Yeah, so, we, underneath every post, we have these edit and uh, delete. And uh, I do not want to see these things when I'm not logged out. So, for these ones, I can be able to customize using the if. You remember, we use the if. User that is authenticated. Then do that. Then we can end our if. So if the user is not authenticated, we are not going to see this. See, they have disappeared. Okay. So in this, we'll have the URL which will be blog post. And let me just refer to the URL. So we have the update and remember that the argument is the primary key. Blog article. Then we have it as a PK. Let's see what we have. Actually, let me just try and uh, disable this first. Copy this and replace it down here with the delete route or the URL. It will also be like that, and then in the, for these, we are going to add edit, and for this other one, we are going to add uh, delete. We have the delete. Uh, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me remove this first. Fresh the page. Yeah, so we have no reverse for the blog article. And uh, this one will I'll refer to the models. So in the reverse dot, uh, you know, we can still get the absolute URL, uh, but it's something I think I'll have to walk around. I may have forgotten something about it. OK. 
get absolute. So we have the post, but we have it appended with the get absolute URL, uh, which is not okay. So anyway, we are going to see how we can work, work around that. Now I'll just add empty placeholder so that we do not get any errors. So yeah, so we the next thing we'll do is that we'll try and see how we can be able to ensure that only a login user is able to access these and uh, I'll refer you to the Django documentation whereby we have these. If we were using a function based view, we could add a decorator that shows a login required uh, on top of the function based view. But in this case, we are using the class based view. And in the class based view, the equivalent is using these uh, login required mixing uh, that has the same behavior as the login required. And uh, basically, this ensures that all requests made by non authenticated users they will be redirected to the login page or show a, a forbidden error for a 43 uh, HTTP code uh, that uh, indicates that they are forbidden to perform the particular request. In this case, it's updating and creating of a blog post. So, just to be sure of what you're talking about, let me just do the create. So we do not want to have this. So let's begin with the create logic. And I'm just going to copy this import from the Django documentation. Inside the views, I'm going to copy. I'm going to add it somewhere. So I'm going to paste it. Uh, I've, I've just pasted this login required mixing and inside the create view, I'm going to add it in before the actual loading the actual view. We have the login required mixing and then we'll have our create view. And I think we can do the same for this update view. Just copy. Add the login required mixing. The update view. So let's refresh and see what we get. So I'm not logged in, so let me try and uh, create and see what will happen. You see, it is redirecting me to the login page. So this is the work of that login required mixing. And uh, if I also click a post here and try and uh, click edit. Uh, update. Yeah, we similarly get this post, uh, this kind of uh, item. So I need to be logged in. Uh, so that we have uh, been able to work around around that. Now we have another problem. Let's see what happens when we try to uh, delete. So you see, we have not. We need also to add the login required mixing in the uh, delete view as well. Uh, let's copy this and paste it here. And let's see what happens. actually have an issue. And, uh, let's see why. So let's see why we, uh, if we click on any post here, like 
this one and try to uh, delete, it still points us to the login. Now, what happens when we log in? Remember, these posts were created by the admin, at least for these uh, four posts. So let's uh, probably look at uh, this one. That's, uh, it's written in Django. So if I click on edit and I log in or update and I log in as a certain user, so let me just by example. And remember, this account is not an admin account. You see, I can still edit. And uh, uh, the, the author was, uh, the initial author is the administrator. Or to explain it further, let, allow me to log out. And then let me sign up as a some user. So I'll call this a uh, test user at uh, email.com. And I'll just put in some password there. Yeah, so we have this, uh, I've already lo I'm logged in. I'll navigate uh, to the blog. And then if I click update, You'll see that I can be able to update, and uh, this should not be the case. Uh, so how do we go around that? We have something that is uh, something else uh, that is called the use class uh, user passes uh, mixing that it tests. Uh, it, you can test conditions. You can test if you know the from the requests from the HTTP request. It, uh, you can test the user parameter if they have a certain email. If uh, the user who is logged in is a given user, uh, or the user who is editing these posts and uh, submitting these requests is uh, actually the you know the author of these uh, posts, and uh, this will help us also to you know to do away with this author because we are, this field should not uh, actually be seen in the in this uh, front end or in this. Uh, web page. So we will uh, go back to our views and uh, we will also add something else here that is called the user passes uh, mixing. And for this one, we will uh, add it on the uh, already existing post. So we will add it in the update and delete views. And we will add it immediately after the login required mixing. So the user passes mixing. Yeah, so we have, okay, it is uh, the warning that we are receiving or we are seeing here uh, states that we need to do something. Uh, as you can see, it states that it is an abstract method. So we need to, if you check inside the code, we need to implement some uh, concepts like uh, get test from and the test func. So that's what we are going to inside here. And the first step will be to, first of all, we'll, cre we'll create a, a method to check whether the form is valid. And uh, this one kind of limits the user. It te checks the user, the author of the post, whether it is uh, the login uh, user from the request. request. So we will uh, ensure that uh, the form, form instance, author, and uh, is equals to the request. And in this case, we need it needs to be inside the function. So we have the request user. So we also need to return uh, the check whether the form is valid. So basically, this function checks whether the logged in user, uh, the user who is updating this blog or editing this blog is actually the author of the uh, user. So then after that, we will add the function for checking uh, if the now this one checks if the author who is uh, updating is indeed the 
current order. So for this one, we are trying to do away with this, this field of author. We do not want it here. It's not really, it's not okay. And I think we can, let's see, I think I can also copy and implement it inside the create view. And uh, for this other one, we need to add create an object. I can call it my object or my OBJ. So this, uh, what this does, this, it basically done, uh, does a test. If I've logged in as John Doe and there's a Jane Doe who created a certain post, I cannot be able to edit that post unless I'm the Jane Doe. Okay, we can be several logged in users or signed up users in a blog post, but I can be, uh, as it is now, I can still be able to edit a post that has been submitted or created by a, another user, and which should also not be the case. Yeah, in this part, yeah, in this instance. So, I'm just going to copy this and also add it below here in the delete view. So I cannot be able to delete a post view who, whose uh, user or whose author is somebody else, okay? Unless I'm the super admin. Uh, so let's see if this uh, indeed is working. Uh, so. You can see I've just refreshed this page and it's already preventing me from editing because I can be a user or I can be somebody who has crowned there, uh, knows the URL route. So I can probably maliciously try to update or delete some posts, okay? So I'll still get a 403 forbidden. So I'll only work on my on the post that I have created. So if I post and create, uh, I'll probably call it just so I think I need to do to do away with this author field. It's not okay having it there. Yep, let's see if it's going to work. So you can see it has submitted even without the author field, which is a required field. This is because it has been taken care of uh, using this uh, form uh, valid uh, method. Yeah, so this uh, summarizes the blog, uh, working of the blog posts and the blog pages. And uh, there's something that I had created in the models uh, that uh, is called the header image but for us to work with images and uh, scripts and the CSS uh, we will need to look at uh, the static handling of static files and uh, we will do this in the next uh, tutorial. Uh, if you like this video uh, kindly drop a like uh, you can share with your friends and uh, don't forget to subscribe also to my channel and uh, Click on the bell icon uh, so that whenever I upload new content, you can uh, get a notification. And uh, before we go, I think I can just do a git commit and I can, I can push it to our GitHub project, uh, to, uh, to the GitHub repository rather. So, created uh, the blog. and say page of easy understanding. So I'm going to push it or push the commits to GitHub and then uh, we will proceed from there. 
I may make some several customizations on the uh, appearances of the blog posts. And uh, then you can look at the static files in our next video. Thank you for watching.